most places you're standing, where, where, from wherever you're standing, you can see the ocean side and the lagoon side. And so you're always within sight of the sea. You're always, always 24 hours of the day in your sleep, you're listening to the pounding of waves. Kiribati, the T-I is pronounced like an S, is a group of 33 coral islands in the Pacific Ocean. It's the only country in the world with territory in all four hemispheres. Most of its 100,000 citizens spend their days fishing, drying coconut meat, and hanging out in the Maneba, the community hut. But within a few decades, the country of Kiribati will be completely underwater. Sea levels are rising because of climate change, meaning Kiribati, where the average elevation is less than seven feet, is drowning. The impacts of climate change cover a wide spectrum from those that will not even feel it for the next 200 years to those who are feeling it yesterday. And we're at that end of the, 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 the spectrum. Early this year, we had a series of high tides which were beyond the predictions on the chat. So they were off the chat. Some of our communities have had to leave their villages because the village is gone. Most heads of state focus on how to grow their country's economy. President Anote Tong has to figure out what will happen to his people when their country is gone. For now, the government is building seawalls, but Tong says that will only delay the inevitable. Next, there's what he calls slow evacuation. That means training Kiribati's traditional subsistence farmers to be nurses or mechanics, so they're eligible for skilled worker immigration to another country. But that only takes care of about 75 people a year. In the longer term, the government might be planning to move the entire population of Kiribati to Fiji. In May, Kiribati bought nearly 6,000 acres on the island of Vanuatu. The president says the land will be used for agricultural purposes for now. And during a visit to Kiribati earlier this year, the, the president of Fiji offered on behalf of his people that, that they would be will, willing to accommodate our people if necessary. That is perhaps the most refreshing reaction that I've ever had. There's also the possibility of floating islands in Kiribati waters. A Japanese company is developing massive so-called floating lily pads that could house up to 30,000 people each. But priced in the billions, Tong says his country couldn't afford them without international help. And uh, that is an out-of-the-box solution. It seems so science fiction at the moment. But if you don't have a choice, and if that is the only choice, what would you do?